Hey Taurus, I'm Empress Rose. Welcome to your reading. These are general readings, so we take what works, we leave what doesn't. I hope it's with everything in life. And um, I might also have caught, if I don't catch your wavelength here um, on this reading, go check other major placements or any placements that you resonate with, that feel good to you, that you're like, you I really identify with. Um, yeah, someone was asking about that the other day. Like, should I check this out? It can't hurt, especially if you're able to take what resonates and works for you and leave what doesn't it won't hurt i mean if if you watch a video and you're like that must be me even though nothing makes sense then i can see like wanting to really limit your exposure all right we're starting with the oracle of mystical movements deck and then we're going to move to a regular uh reading with the santa muerte tarot deck i get comfortable here in my seat all right anything else with keys on trees. No, I mean with Oracle and Mystical Elements. Okay, yeah. All right. Last minute. Okay. All right. So we're going to start with keys on trees. All right, Taurus. Keys on trees. You're in a weird situation that isn't really your responsibility. You don't really put yourself in the situation. It could be just the general gist of society and the world at large, or it could be a specific person. Put you in a weird situation. You're kind of stuck here. Um, you, you did not get here of your own volition. And yet, as with so many things in life, we did not get here with our own volition. I did not choose this, you know, uh, situation or uh, childhood or you know you don't choose a lot of things and yet it's still your responsibility to deal with the fallout to heal from your childhood to heal from the situation to you know your insurance company calls and says hey everything's been all wrong and you've got thousands of dollars um, and now you have to spend uh, you know all day on the phone um, because someone else made a mistake right that's that's this card someone else did something something else was handed to you and here you are you're kind of stuck up here uh, you you've got your trunk though you've got the tools you need to get out you're not trapped here you look trapped here but you are not trapped here but it is going to take work you've got to figure out which of these keys works and don't you dare stop at the first key if the first key does not work there are a lot of other keys here if you you know, do, do you want to die here or do you want to like get out of this situation, get out of this stuckness and um, and find your other key? And, and so you have to keep working. You have to keep doing it. You have to keep going. This is almost a little bit of the wounded warrior vibe. Like, yeah, you're trapped. You're stuck. You don't want to be here. But guess who's got to spring you? Nobody but you can spring you from this. Oh, eight of swords, too. Uh, nobody but you can spring you from this 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 situation it's just you and you've got a lot of work to do is it fair that you're up here hell no it's not fair but you're the only one that can get you out help is not on the way i mean i want to say help is on the way but you're the help that's on the way here right so um but good thing is you're probably going to get down from this tree i think there's going to take some self-reflection here once you get down though you have a really great view right like you learned a lot while you were up there about the lay of the land, where the cool, uh, cool new watering hole is. You had quite a view in this situation. You've seen some things now. You know some things now. So when you do spring yourself, uh, you're going to be much wiser. Um, but you got to put some work into this. I mean, it's just classic life. Other people do shit, and then you got to clean it up. If you want to be free, you got to free yourself, right? That's just the way life is. Um, we all get handed stuff. Even your parents that handed you stuff got handed stuff. Were they able to free themselves from that stuff? Kind of impacts your life a lot, whether they were able to do that or not. But that was their business to do that. And now it's your business to do your part and what you've got to free yourself from. Right? And it's going to take work. And the first thing might not might not be the right thing. So you got to keep going. It reminds me of trying to find a therapist. The first one might not be the right one. But if you want a therapist... Uh, don't quit on the first one that you don't jive with. There's a lot of different types of people in the world and a lot of different therapists and a lot of different people that you can get along with and learn from. And if the first couple don't work, keep going. Because it's not like therapy's not worth it. If you, I mean, wow, we're really talking about like healing some past stuff here. But um, it's not like therapy's not worth it. And, it. and you shouldn't stop if you don't jive with the very first therapist you work with. Just like just like if you, I don't know where this is all, this is really funny, but um, I, I knew a woman who dated a man in college for six months. It didn't work out. 
And so she never dated again. It was, well, I think you just harmed yourself, but you know, possibly uh, saved a lot of other people from harm from dating someone who thought that if the first thing didn't work out, they were just never gonna date again. Like, um, you know, I, there's a time to be like, I'm never dating again. Um, but after a one six month relationship in college is not it, right? So that's a little bit of this vibe. Like don't, don't stop just cause the first one didn't work out. Like that's, that, we don't need to do that. We can keep going, keep going, keep working on it. You want to date? You want to have a really, I mean, if she didn't want to have a relationship, that's totally fine, but that's not how she's talked about it. Right. Um, but if she didn't want one, perfectly fine totally normal don't have a relationship that's great but um you know if you want to stay in the, and and that wouldn't be the metaphor isn't perfect okay but if you want to stay in the cage stay in the cage but i don't think you want to i think you want to get out i think you want your freedom and it's going to take a little while to figure that out right so then we've got mermaid's love here um we're talking about a relationship between opposites here we've got some very logical this could be a relationship within yourself your logic your emotions, getting together, uh, having a little dance, bringing those two things together. Or this could be, um, you know, this mermaid's love is really about, this card is about the ideal relationship, whether you're in it or you're just dreaming about it. You might just be dreaming about it right now, but it is two people that are happy with who they are. They live in totally different worlds. They have totally different skill sets and it doesn't, it doesn't diminish their love for each other. In fact, it makes the relationship stronger because they're not, neither one of them is coming in with a um, need for the other person to validate them or looking for um, all the ways in which they're exactly the same and nobody's feeling like they need to adapt to what the other, I mean, there's an adaptation, right? But no one's feeling like, oh, I'm kind of really emotional. I should be less emotional for this person or they won't like me. There's like an admiration for the other's skill sets, but not necessarily um, a need to mimic them or a need to conform to each other. There's no conforming to the other person possible. We've got bird air, we've got emotion water, right? Um, and, and there's not a need to conform to the other person or to please the other person. There's just a need to be yourself here. So that's something that you might be thinking about dreaming about um, hoping to find maybe that's what this keys on trees is is you're hoping to find this and and so my random story about this woman who dated someone for six months and then refused to ever date again and was very bitter about it for I think she's about 30 when I met her and she was 19 when the six-month relationship happened um, and I I should feel sorry for her but she was really mean so it was not all i don't know i don't know i'm conf i'm not a perfect person okay so um uh so anyway so they could be you know looking for that uh, but don't stop with the first one don't stop at the first the first thing you try to get to to get into this healthy relationship and then we have sleeping beauty's dream we have subconscious issues you're looking for safety you're looking for um a sense of safety and security uh, you want to, and, and so that might be uh, coloring what keys you pick up, even your desire to, because in that cage, you're safe and secure, aren't you? You really are safe in that cage. I mean, that cage, what's a cage for? Is it keeping you in or keeping other dangerous things out? Um, so you are dreaming about that, a dream about safety and security and wanting that. Um, and, and it's affecting your choices. So for good or bad, I don't know. I don't know. But it's definitely affecting, you know, what kind of key, how hard you're trying to find the right key to open up. Maybe you want to open up to somebody. And you're finding a hard time figuring out how to do that. And maybe because you want the safety and security and it's going to feel really uncomfortable to open up. All right, let's see what the Santa Muerte Tarot says. Man, that was a lot on the... I mean, that's why I can't do those cards every week because it's just like a lot comes up for me when I look at them. They've just got so... They're so rich. All right, Santa Muerte. This is Taurus's past, present, inner landscape. What's at issue? Your environment, your to-do list, your possible outcome. Okay. 
All right, I love it. So in your recent past, you have a really damn good idea. It's got legs, it's got potential, it's got potential for work, potential for money, for potential time expenditure. I'm starting to see pentacles as time and money. Um, so something started here, something began, some seed was planted and has begun and it's it's got so much potential. It's very rich, the environment uh, that this seed has been planted in or this idea has has been planted in is very rich, is very promising new beginning in work or career or um, hot, something you spend your time on, something like that, a very promising new beginning has occurred in your recent past. Your current situation has you in Eight of Cups. Man. Okay, so Eight of Cups, just feeling drained. Oh my, I just did the same thing she did. Like, oh, just feeling drained. I just felt like suddenly I didn't know what I wanted to do, what I needed to say, what came next. And so I think that's literally, I was literally just feeling this card. Uh, you just, there's a little bit of overwhelm here, a little bit of grief about something, some sadness, maybe really not knowing what to do next. This is, um, overflowing emotion is on your mind. There's been some sort of an ending here, which is really interesting because this Ace of Pentacles was this new beginning, this new thing happening. And then we go to this Eight of Cups, which is this, um, really thinking about emotions, there's a there's a weeping vibe here, an ending vibe. It almost feels like a, a miscarriage of some kind, and that's not going to... I mean, if that's not literal for you, that's like a metaphor of some sort of miscarriage, some sort of thing that had this promising new beginning, but now you find yourself in this place of grief and sorrow, and it's not working out. It could be a relationship that happened uh, that seemed so right, seemed so promising, seemed so great. Um, and, and it's just, it's not that, it's that first key. It's that key that just didn't work out. It's not the right one. And it's very, you're very grief stricken and, and you're really actually thinking a lot about your feelings and your, your sorrows, your sadness, um, and just, Yeah, there's just a lot of sadness and, and an ending here. And I think it was a really promising new beginning. It totally looked like it was going to work out. Um, you know, you've been able to reach this key. Hey, I've got a key. I got a keyhole here. Very Ghostbusters again. Um, and and it looked like it was going to be the right thing, but it just wasn't. And it, and it ended before it almost even really got going. It was so promising. And so there's just this whole grief process about it. There's this whole sadness as, you know, it's difficult to process this, this emotion, these feelings. Um, and they're just weighing very heavily on your mind. Um, and yeah, you're really deep in thought about these feelings, about these emotions. I don't think you quite understand what happened or how or, or why. And you're very weighed down on it. What, here's what you hope for. Three of Cups. Teamwork makes the dream work. You're hoping for this team. I mean, this could be a project that looked really promising and really great and is just kind of falling apart and and ending before it really got a chance to, to go anywhere. Um, but you're hoping for a team. You're hoping to, to get to assemble everything you need, everyone you need for to make something happen, to make something grow. <sighs> It's like you're, you haven't given up on this dream completely. There's a lot of grief about it, but you still want it to grow because we're going from Ace of Pentacles, a whole grief process, sadness, things not working out, feeling depressed, and then, but you want to keep going. So it is this, it is this, like this first key didn't work out. You're really sad. You got to process some of that stuff. And then, but you're still going to keep going. You're still going to keep trying for new keys. That's what you want to do. Whether you feel like doing that right now or not is a different story, but you, your hope is to, to keep working at it, keep growing in this. So I don't think it's completely this project or this thing that got started is completely dead. I just think like it's like the first relationship didn't work out okay 
But that doesn't mean that it's dead. There's a grief process about that, but that doesn't mean that you're not going to find your team or your 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 this the whole project isn't going to work out. So your first short story wasn't published, and maybe a publisher told you it was garbage and shit. So you're going to write more short stories, and you're going to eventually find you know the mentor you need, the the people you need. That's what you're hoping for. You're hoping to continue watering. An overall dream, even though this this specific iteration of it didn't work out. So you're going to keep going, which I like to see. That's what you want to do, I think. Or maybe you're worried about it. You're like, oh, God, I'm not ready to go find more keys. That was exhausting. I don't want to do that. Maybe you need a little break and you're worried that you have to keep working, even though you need a break. But so but overall, I see you hopefully um, grabbing for another key, trying again, trying something else, trying something new. Uh, yeah, this sucked. This was this ended and this is sad. This fell apart, but you're going to keep working at it. You're going to keep going. OK, then uh, what's at issue here is this Ten of Cups, but it's reversed. So, yeah, the dream just did not happen. Ten of Cups would have been beautiful. It would have been this beautiful relationship, this beautiful relationship of equals and fabulous people. Um, coming together, Ten of Cups is that whole fulfillment. It's it's the whole the whole the whole thing. You get the whole thing here, the fruition of this this beautiful emotional journey, just fully coming into fruition. You get to enjoy the fruits of of your labors and the the. It's just. You know, it's that happy family. It's that happy village, that happy family. And that did not happen. That didn't happen. You don't have that right now. You're still dreaming of it. You still want it. But this relationship or this project just didn't work out. It didn't bring you the happiness or it never came to fruition. Ten of Cups is that whole emotional journey or relationship coming to fruition, kind of coming into its own and that did not happen and you are upset about it even though you're still dreaming okay i love this i love this you i mean i don't love it right you didn't get you didn't get the whole happy family situation here but you're like you still have the dream you're just going through a grief process you didn't get this didn't it didn't work out it didn't work out that key didn't work out you're still dreaming of safety, security, a solid foundation, a solid relationship. You're still dreaming about that. You still want that, but you didn't get it this time. But I love this three of pentacles sitting right here. It's so encouraging. You're still going to work at it. You're still going to try another key. You're still going to keep keep growing and keep moving. And that is very beautiful. Even though you're, you're in this grief process right now, you're going to try again. You're going to try again. So yeah. That's beautiful. You're persistent. I like that. You're not going to give up after the first key. Yeah, don't do not do that. Don't give up after the first key. After one six-month relationship when you're 19 years old. Don't. I mean, if you if that's what you want, and it is what you want, um, why would you stop after the first try? So, but in your environment, oh, sitting right underneath this Ace of Pentacles. Okay, so this one didn't work out, but you got a new one coming in. Ace of Cups, a very uh, emotional new beginning in your environment, another new beginning in your environment. You had one, it didn't work out, you cried for a while, but you're still going to water some things. And look at how much water this desert is getting. You're out here watering, you're the farmer, you're going to keep working, even though this, this didn't work out. And you're going to keep working and you're going to keep going and look at your watering. This is almost like this Ace of Cups is receiving all this water that you're giving it. Um, you're growing it. Um, it's this desert that suddenly comes to life. Like what we what looked like a desert is suddenly full of frogs and lily pads and all sorts of growth and all sorts of life. And it's an emotional new beginning. It's a new it's a new love offering. Maybe this one was just it just was it, it looked like it was going to work. It looked like it should work. You know, it had everything it needed. Um, but here you're trying again, and this one looks gorgeous. I love this. In your environment, there's another new beginning happening here. So yeah, keep going. These this keys on trees is, is really powerful in this reading right now. It's that keep going, keep working on it. Even if the first thing doesn't get you what you want, there's another thing. I love it. Under the Ace of Pentacles, we have the Ace of Cups. Um, coming in here. Uh, it's almost like the thunder claps 
um, and the lightning strikes and boom, here's this uh, flood of emotions. It's very beautiful, beautiful new beginning. Um, and then we have uh, your to-do list is the six of um, swords. This is possibly one of my favorite decks and cards. Leaving behind a very painful situation. Um, this is sort of a refugee card to me. This is like that, this place where you've been was really painful, right? You've been in a lot of mental anguish and a lot of mental pain. And your job is to leave that behind. You're heading out into the open ocean. What you don't know, um, this is uh, the land where you've been sucks and you know it. Um, and so you're making steps, you're taking steps, possibly even physical steps to head off to this new beginning. Is there a storm out here on this open ocean? Yes, there is. Are you going to be safe? You're not guaranteed safety. No, you're not. But you know what? That unknown is so much better than the known, than the known sort of depression and sadness and sorrow that you've experienced. You're going to launch off of this. You're going to, you're launching from this place into some sort of unknown here. And I feel like this is a launch. Uh, so I think you do need to, to push off here from, from this grief where you've been of this not working out. You've got a new beginning around you. And I think you need to go towards it, even though you have no idea where it's going to go. And I'm not telling you it's going to work out. I'm telling you it's the next key. And this is saying it's time for you to grab for that next key. If you have a key in your environment, a new key coming in here, it's time for you to reach for that new key because this cage right here isn't where you want to be. You don't want to keep, keep being here. That's not where you want. You want the key to get out of this cage, right? This whole thing is about trying to get out of this cage and, and you've got one key. It didn't work out. You're sad, but you're going to keep working because uh, you really want to get out of this cage. You really want this happiness. You really want this fulfillment. You've got another key in your hand. It's time for you to keep going, keep trying, launch, get out of this cage. If this is the right key, that, that this might be the, the right key that helps you get out of this cage. So you're moving forward away from this cage, away from this place where you don't feel safe. See, you're dreaming of safety. You don't feel safe where you're at right now. You don't feel safe. It's time for you to leave because uh, this is what you want. This is your dream, the safety and security. That's what you're dreaming of, um, a good, healthy um, safe relationship or situation. Uh, I think there's an offer of that, but it is unknown. You don't know where it's going to go. Oh, I love this. Yes. You don't know where it's going to go. And here in your future is this high priestess. She doesn't want you to know where it's going to go. That's what she is. She knows. She knows, but she's, this is, she's not telling you. I mean, in this book, she, in this card, she does have an open book here, but she's got the key in her hand and the high priestess is very spiritual. So you could be heading into some sort of more spiritually focused place for your life. Um, or I, uh, the high priestess to me is always like, yeah, I know. I'm not telling though. I'm not telling because this is the important part is that you keep trying the, these keys. The important part is that you keep trying and you keep going and you, and you move on. That's the important part. Whether this next one works out or not, that's not important to her at all. She wants you to just keep moving and just keep going, keep trying the next key. She's not going to tell you which one's the right one. That's because the process of, look, she's got the key in her hand. I love it when these cards talk to each other, when these different decks talk to each other. She's got the key in her hand, right? So, and it could be heading towards a more spiritual place, a more, a more spir a spiritual practice or something like that is going to be part of finding this key for safety and security. That seems to make a lot of sense, but it could also be that the key is in her hands and she's not handing it to you. You have to find it. She's not giving, she's not handing you anything, but it, I, I think that part of the key to this safety and security that you're looking for could be as held within a spiritual practice. I think it could also be, um, be just that she wants, she's got the key. There is the, the key exists. The key exists and you need to have faith that the key exists. She's not going to tell you where it is, which key it is, whatever, but it does exist. That's what she's here to say. The key, the key to your, to what you want exists and part of you freeing yourself, part of you moving on from this place um, of sadness where you feel trapped 
or where you're not getting what you want um, out of life, um, part of you doing that is that you have to you have to put in the work to find these keys. And she wants you to do that. So it's like if we go back to the original metaphor of like there is a therapist out there for you, but part of you finding that therapist. Part of this whole process is this commitment to yourself and to your own mental health where you keep looking for a good match. Perfect match? No, you're never going to find a perfect match in a therapist. But a good good enough match? Yeah, a good enough match. Um, you're going to keep looking for that and you're going to... Um, because part of... The, so I'm thinking, I'm thinking about, as this metaphor is, part of the idea of you continuing to work through these keys is showing the universe, showing this high priestess, um, your commitment to yourself and your commitment to your own health and your own well-being. And part of, and this also shows your commitment to your own health and your own well-being. And the universe can meet you halfway with that. You know, she's the key exists, uh, but you need to show that you are committed to this process of freeing yourself and um, health and well-being. So if, if the first key doesn't, doesn't fit, um, that's almost, that's like part of the plan. That's whole, all part of what you have to learn is that you have to keep trying new things if the first one isn't the right fit. And then we have uh, uniquely you. I love it. So from the Kuan Yin deck, the more we are willing to become authentic rather than conventional, the more we will need to issue conditioning which is what I originally saw this um, elephant in this thing, uh, conditioning you know, other people's ideas of who we're supposed to be and, and our childhood conditioning. In favor of aliveness, be willing to run the risk of being authentic so you can live from your heart and experience real joy. So, All right, some final little words from the wild Kuan Yin. I hope you have a wonderful week, Taurus. Thank you so much for your likes, subscribes, and comments. Very much appreciated.